this is his garden. There we are. I think we're all on the same page, so these rabbits will now surrender their natural instinct to feed themselves. Hey, that was a clip from the movie Peter Rabbit. What do you think? Did you understand it? There was an idiom in it. Did you hear it? Hello, my name is Dakota, and if you've ever walked out of an English class thinking, hey, I'm beginning to really understand English only to be totally frustrated when you sat down and watched an American movie. You may have understood most of the words being spoken, but you couldn't understand the meaning. Having a clear understanding of English is so important, whether it's being used in school, social situations, or in your professional life. English has become the common world language and regardless of why you're trying to learn it, it is essential that you understand the true meaning of what is being said. To do so, you must understand idioms and phrasal verbs. This is why I'm making these videos. I want to help you learn about idioms and phrasal verbs, but more importantly, I want to do it in a fun and enjoyable way. Learning a new language can be so boring. I'm hoping that, by using movies and TV shows, you'll be able to enjoy the learning process more. There will be seven idioms or phrasal verbs examined in each of these videos and there will be an initial series of videos analyzing about 100 idioms and phrasal verbs. The number of these phrases will quickly ramp up to more than 1,000 idioms and phrasal verbs as more videos are uploaded. These videos would be great for teachers as well. So sit back and relax and let's learn about idioms and phrasal verbs. Our first phrase is, get this over with. The meaning is the phrasal verb is to do, finish or accomplish something that is unpleasant or undesirable and to do it as quickly as possible. An example would be, my father told me that I can't have a new smartphone until I get an A in math. So I thought, let's get this over with. I want that phone. Now let's take a look at some movie clips with examples of this phrasal verb. What are these? Puppets. You use them when you tell the story. Okay, let's get this over with. Three little kittens love to play. In this clip, the children ask Gru to read them a bedtime story. Gru doesn't really want to do this, but he feels that it is necessary. He says, let's get this over with. Gru says this because he just wants to finish this chore so he can move on to doing something else more interesting. Let's get this over with, Ryder. In this clip, Flynn Ryder has been captured by the king's men. While waiting in jail, a guard comes and says, let's get this over with, to Ryder. The guard is saying that he just wants to finish doing this unpleasant task. Flynn touches his neck because he thinks something bad will happen to him. Maybe he will be hung by his neck. Where are we going? Okay, take a deep breath and insert the needle into the node. Come on, Kate. Let's get this over with. In this clip, Dr. House and Wilson are talking with Kate via a video call. House and Wilson want to do an unpleasant test on Kate that involves her putting a needle into a node in her body. The two men know this will be uncomfortable, but it must be done. So House says, let's get this over with. He is saying that although this is an unpleasant task, it must be done. Therefore, let's do it. You used her name. Wow. You're doing great. Our next phrase is the phrasal verb, keep an eye on. It basically means to watch something or someone closely or carefully. For example, I might ask my teenage daughter to keep an eye on her little brother. Understand? Okay, it's always helpful to see these idioms used in actual movies, so let's look at some examples. How much money do you have? $80. I have 42 that will probably cover taxi cabs. But how would I get there? Really? I have to run these tickets over to someone. Can you keep an eye on things out front till I get back? 
In this clip, Jessica is explaining to Jonah how he might be able to travel to New York. Jessica's mother comes in and asks her to keep an eye on things out front because she has to go outside. Jessica's mother is asking for her to make sure that there are no problems in the front of the house while she is out. Sure, Mom. I need you to watch the prisoner tonight. Well, daggone. Wait a minute, what if he tries to run again? Just let him run out of gas and tow him on back, but keep an eye on him. In this clip, the sheriff is talking with Mater. The sheriff asks Mater to keep an eye on Lightning McQueen while he is gone. The sheriff is asking Mater to watch McQueen carefully because he is a prisoner and he may try to escape. Yes, sir! Why you? What does she want? A job. For the boy. Only a job? Well, yes. Then what are you worried about? If he works here, you'll be able to keep an eye on him while I do a little digging. Find out how much of this is real. In this clip, Chef Skinner is talking with his lawyer about the boy, Linguini. The chef thinks that the boy is trying to trick him and possibly steal the restaurant. The lawyer tells him not to worry and that since he is working there, he can keep an eye on him. The lawyer means that the chef can watch and observe the boy while the lawyer finds out more about the boy's background. Great. We're ready to continue to our third phrase. This phrase is the phrasal verb, let you down. The meaning of this phrasal verb is to disappoint someone by not doing something you said you will do or that they expected you to do. An example would be, hey dad, I know that you paid a lot of money for me to go to a university and then I failed all my classes. I'm sorry that I let you down. Okay, now let's once again watch some examples of this phrasal verb from some movie clips. And I know you have a lot of friends. But I don't. You're my only friend, Calvin. And I will never let you down again, I promise. In this clip, Bob is talking with his boyhood friend, Calvin. Bob feels like he had previously disappointed Calvin and says, I will never let you down again. Bob means that he will never betray Calvin's trust and make him disappointed again. Make sure she doesn't leave until I get back. Should we break both ankles or just one? I'm sorry. That was weird. Both. What? Just stall her. I won't let you down. In this clip, Peter Rabbit is talking with his friends. He is telling them that he is going to solve their problem and that he won't let them down. He's saying that they can trust him and that they won't be disappointed if they do what he asks. I promise. Oh, Harry's cup running over. Uh, George, about that job, Bruce spoke out of turn. I never said I'd take it. You've been holding the bag here for four years and... Well, I won't let you down, George. In this clip, Harry has just gotten married. He is talking with his brother, George. George has been doing all the work in the family business while Harry was at school. Harry knows that George wants to go to school too and says, I won't let you down. Harry is saying that George can trust him. He will now start working and he won't disappoint George. I would like to... Well, wait, wait a minute, I forgot the bags. I'll be right back. So we've now finished three phrases. What do you think? Are you enjoying these videos? We have more of these free videos online and we're working hard to add more each week. It takes a lot of time to create this content and we could really use your help. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing to our channel, you will be able to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video to YouTube. We really need your help. Alright, we're now going to take a look at our fourth phrase. This phrase is an idiom and it's called, on the same page. This idiom means, to have the same kind of understanding about a situation. An example would be, okay, so you said that you'll handle sales and marketing and I'll be responsible for accounting and inventory control. Yes, I think we're on the same page now. Great, now let's take a look at some clips from various movies. Let me pass that along. 
This is his garden. There we are. I think we're all on the same page, so these rabbits will now surrender their natural instinct to feed themselves. In this clip, B is talking with old Mr. McGregor about the rabbits. McGregor is angry at the rabbits because they keep eating his vegetables. B pretends to talk with the rabbits and explains that they should not eat Mr. McGregor's vegetables. After talking with the rabbits, B says that the rabbits are now on the same page. She means that the rabbits now understand all the rules and that they can't eat the vegetables. But she is joking. I make this delivery. I'm gonna have me over a million. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So we on the same page then. In this clip, Wardell is a gun runner who is talking with Lewis about his plan to make money. After explaining the way he works, he asks Lewis if we're on the same page. He's asking Lewis if he understands what he's saying and whether he will continue to work with him. Yeah, follow. I gotta say, you really got us pegged. We're just a deep well of anger and self-loathing. Denial. Sure, that too. Narcissism. Yeah, yeah. Emotional emptiness. So we're on the same page. In this clip, Wolf is talking to Diane about his gang of thieves. Diane is explaining all of their negative qualities. Wolf says he agrees with her opinions and that they are on the same page. He means that he thinks she's right and he agrees with her statements. What is he doing? Excellent. We're now going to discuss the fifth phrase of this video. This phrase is an idiom called out of business. This idiom simply means to discontinue the business or the plan. An example would be, if my employees don't start acting more responsibly, they're going to put me out of business. All right, now let's look at some movie clips of this idiom. Whoa! What do you have at your store? I have gas. <laughs> Lots of gas. <laughs> okay, boys, stay with me. Uh, and Flo, what'll happen if no one can come to your station to buy gas? I'll go out of business and we'll have to leave town. In this clip, Sally is talking with Flo about working in Radiator Springs. Flo sells gasoline and Sally asks her what will happen if nobody buys her gas. Flo tells Sally that if nobody buys her gas, she will go out of business. Flo is saying that she will have to close her shop and move away from their town. 50 grand, I gotta chase you down for 1200, forget about it. No, 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 Jack, please, Jack, just... Jack, nothing, forget about it, what else you got? God, I got nothing, this is it. If you don't find this guy, I'm out of business. In this clip, Eddie is a bondsman that needs to find a criminal. He tells Jack that if he cannot find this man, he is out of business. Eddie is telling Jack that if he cannot find this man, he will have to close his shop and discontinue working. Eddie, I'll do it for 100000 Ask us no. If you ask the state alienist, the answer is yes. Who is he? What's he do? He's a bookkeeper. He starts in at $20 a week, and after 14 years, he gradually works himself up to $17.50. Come on, come. No, McCluskey Company goes out of business, and Williams loses his job. In this clip, Hildy is a reporter that is asking about the life of Earl Williams, who has been convicted of murder. The other reporters tell her that he was a bookkeeper until the company he worked for went out of business. The reporters are telling Hildy that Earl has had a difficult life and that recently the company he worked for closed down and he lost his job. That's interesting. Whereas I am a horrible person, therefore I have no choice but to be horrible. That's what you're saying. But that's all right. That's all right. I put you out of business, so... In this clip, Joe Fox is explaining to Kathleen how she just insulted him without knowing she did it. Kathleen realizes that Joe is right. Joe says that he understands why she might be angry because he put her out of business. Joe is admitting that the actions of his company forced Kathleen's company to close down. You're entitled to hate me. Great work. You're doing fantastic. Now let's take a look at our sixth phrase. 
This phrase is the phrasal verb, run out of. The meaning of this phrasal verb is to finish using the supply of something. An example of this phrasal verb is, we have to stop our class now. We've run out of time. Okay, now let's look at some movie clips that use this phrasal verb. Wait, what? Your name's Baby. B-A-B-Y Baby. Yeah? Well, then you have us all beat. <laughs> Every damn song is about you. <laughs> we could drive back and forth across the states forever and never run out of baby songs. We might run out of gas. <laughs> In this clip, Baby is talking with Deborah about driving across the country with her. Deborah tells Baby that there would be plenty of songs on the radio with the word baby in it. She says that they will never run out of baby songs to listen to. He says yes, but they might run out of gas. He means that although they might have plenty of baby songs to listen to, they might not have enough gas. Yeah, in fact, it's a very simple program. Isn't that, isn't that right? So what happens when you run out of choices? In this clip, Susan and Josh are talking to the managers about a new toy that they've developed. One of the managers asks what the user will do when they run out of choices while playing the game. Susan explains that when the user is finished with their existing choices, their company can sell new discs that give the user more adventures to enjoy. Well, that's the great thing. I mean, you can just sell different adventures. Just pop in a brand new disc. Do you know what happened to me while you were off flying around? I was almost in an earthquake. I had this gas station blow up beside my car. There's telephone poles falling all over the road. I'm almost killed and I just taught the whole thing off this stupid car runs out of gas. In this clip, Lois, a reporter, is explaining to Superman what a horrible day she has had. The last thing she says is that her car ran out of gas. Lois is saying that so many exciting things were happening and then there was no more gas in her car. So she couldn't seek out good news stories like she wanted to. Sorry about that, Lois. That was spectacular. Great work. We've now come to our last phrase in this video. This phrase is an idiom called, take it easy. The meaning of this idiom is, to relax. Don't worry. We use this idiom a lot. An example of this idiom is, you're so worried about everything. Take it easy. Everything is going to be okay. Okay, it's once again time to look at some movie clips of this idiom. Oh, then you must know what happens when I flex my pinky. <gasps> no, no, no. You know the hardest part of this? The hardest part is cleaning up afterwards. <laughs> okay. Okay, take it easy. In this clip, Master Shifu is showing Po a kung fu move. Po recognizes the move immediately and knows that he could be hurt badly. He says to Shifu, "Take it easy." Po is asking Master Shifu to not hurt him, but rather relax and talk calmly with him. Now listen closely, Panda Uguay. Of course, but he knows the other guy's voice. Boswell, is everything all right in there? Joe, answer him. <clears throat> um, we you take it easy, I'll be out in a minute. In this clip, Joe is talking to Mr. Jordan about changing into the body of another man named Mr. Farnsworth. The butler is calling Mr. Farnsworth's name, but Joe thinks that if he speaks, the butler will not recognize his voice. Mr. Jordan tells Joe to answer the butler. So Joe tells the frantic butler to take it easy. Joe is telling the butler that he is okay and that he doesn't need to worry. He's also telling the butler to relax. Very good, sir. Let's go. Wallace, Joey, come on, fast. That's fine. Fast. Take it easy. Take it easy. In this clip, Batman's father, Thomas Wayne, is being robbed by a thief. Thief demands his wallet and his wife's jewelry. Mr. Wayne tells the thief to take it easy. Mr. Wayne is telling the thief to relax and not get too excited.
He knows the thief has a gun, and he can see that the thief is nervous. He is worried the thief might shoot his gun. Here you go. Congratulations, you've completed the video. I hope that you will now understand these phrases when you hear them in the future. Now for anyone that would like to test themselves to check their comprehension, I've included a series of multiple choice questions for you to answer. Please note that the video plays a little fast, but you can stop the video at any time to consider your answers. Good luck!